Before we start, a quick shout out to Bank, who very kindly sent me a couple of their lamps, and I'm assuming they're so confident in a product that I'd probably give it a video mention. And yeah, you're right. So very quickly, they have this really snazzy desk lamp with a curve in it to give a wide, even light across the desk, and it's touch sensitive on a ring, aren't we all, to turn on and off. And then the real star in my eyes is the Bank screen bar, which sits on top of any monitor and shines a bar of light straight onto your desk without it going anywhere near your face or reflecting off the screen. And the reason they're both really good in my book is because as well as the warm lamp light that you can get with their LEDs, both of these bad boys can shift over into daylight white, which any artist will tell you is super important for clear recordings and correct colour levels in your artwork. So thanks a lot for the lamps Bank, yes they're great and sending them to me did pay off. So links in the description below for anybody who's interested and again this is not a promotional video and disclaimer to anybody out there who sends me something it doesn't guarantee I'll review it. But hashtag these lights are awesome. Artwork, critiques, photoshop files and reference sheets are all available on my Patreon. And save the date guys as Draw With Mikey episode 100 will be live on YouTube on Saturday the 22nd of September. Hey there guys my name's Mikey welcome back to my room it's time for another tutorial and today Today we're going to be covering from head to toe the full body proportions and basic anatomy for your female anime and manga characters. Now this video comes off of the back of the last one where we had a few webcam issues so this particular one is again going to cover the mapping or the surface sections of a body for your anime and manga characters. But you did actually ask in particular, how do I know how to do each step and each measurement and each placement? So we are gonna get a little bit technical as well, just so that you can use these basic constructions as a starting point for your own character designs at home. Now, I've got a super cheap disposable mechanical pencil, a few sheets of printer paper so that it's a nice textured surface and a ruler for once as well. Let's get all of this lined up and we're going to start off with um, a slightly dull bit, a little bit of groundwork and that is I'm going to measure out seven sections onto my sheet of paper for today and that is because when it comes to measuring out the human form in art, whether it's anime, manga, cartoons, whatever, uh, you don't kind of really go okay my character's five foot four or six foot four and things like that, sure they have heights but the way that you actually understand the measurements and relationships for body are in relationship to the amount of head heights tall that your character is going to be. So on my piece of paper I'm just going to have a line down each side really quickly and I'm going to split the sheet into seven sections. Actually I'm probably going to go for about seven and a half because when it comes to your character designs, I'm going to do it in three centimeter increments for this example, then most adult female anime characters tend to fall um, into the range of being about six and a half heads to seven and a half heads tall. If you go any taller than that, say um, eight uh, heads in height, then you have a very Amazonian character, very, very statuesque and may not strictly be um, what you're after. And personally, I keep my anime girls just a touch shorter just a touch curvier, although we're not going to go on overload today. Now in the last tutorial, as mentioned, I had some webcam issues. I hopefully got them all absolutely sorted out this time around. Um, but do let me know in the comment section, how is the visual quality? What's going on for you guys at home? Because obviously, if you're not learning from this, then it's no good. But if it's helping you, then I'd love to hear about it. And that is, of course, why we've got our sheet of paper this way around instead of sideways just so that I can get um, two nice standing characters together. So now that I've got these different sections, I'm just going to actually block them out really quickly. So maybe you guys are doing the same thing at home. You can always pause this video, but grab your sheet of paper and then create these different measurements, each about three centimeters apart if you're working on an A4 sheet, or really as large and as small as you like, because we're gonna just be talking about these as individual head heights. That's gonna be the recurring theme and also kind of our measuring stick for what's going on. Now this paper's getting a bit wonky but I'll get these lines out of the way and line everything back up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. Oop. Round about here. Lovely. That's going to be our working zone. Now my lines probably aren't super super clear but do not worry as long as they're clear for you guys at home that is good enough for me. And I'll draw um, a character facing towards us and facing away, but I'll try to keep the pose relatively interesting if we can. So, 
Basically, as you might understand, we're going to start from the top. It's always nice to begin from the head of your character and work your way down, I find. Some people like to start from the torso as well, but it all depends on how you're working out the placement of your character and what's going on. So we are going to keep things simple, and I am going to simplify some of the different parts of a body into some very basic building block shapes as well just so that you guys can crack on straight out of the gate if you're relatively new to anime and manga in general so the way i like to um, do a sort of standard head for a character is i'm going to start off by drawing a circle and that's going to fill um, a little over two thirds of the height of this zone i'm going to stick to the left so that we can do front and back side to side and I'm going to keep my construction lines relatively dark but also relatively rough so I do apologize I'm going to just get a circle in here and this is going to be the head for my character just building it up with a load of small strokes to try to make that circle as accurate as we might be able to get away with like so and then center line I'm going to have slightly down off to the side for this character Cheek is going to be just a relatively straight line that falls off the outside of the circle, sweeps ever so slightly in, and once it gets level with the bottom of the circle, curves right in quite nicely to be kind of a cheek jaw section on the far end. And then from that chin point, we're going to sweep out much more shallow lily because we've got a bit more of the side of the head of this character before we come up the side like so. And then if I imagine that the center of this circle at a slight angle is the line of our character's brow then I know that the ears are probably just gonna pop off the side here like so and you might catch a tiny bit of ear on that far edge there and that the eyes for our characters will sit just underneath this brow line but I'm gonna keep these as um, fairly straightforward uh, reference sheets or essentially blank templates of people so that you guys can maybe put your own characters on top at home and of course uh, all of the uh, worksheets to all of my drawing tutorials are available for just a dollar on Patreon the entire set one dollar so you know check it out if you're ever interested so what you guys were asking about was how do we understand how far to go now after the head guys for your female anime and manga characters or in general you're probably going to find that half of this space is dedicated to the torso and the body and the other half is dedicated to the legs and the feet and it's actually going to be a bit more space for the legs than the torso but only just so i'm going to go about a third of the way into our next head height section down and i'm going to get a shoulder line in that sweeps across just like this i've got a tiny bit of angle to this one but nothing too much the distance between the head and that shoulder line is what the next for so i'm just gonna sweep straight in and down bear in mind guys we're looking slightly to the left and the shoulder width is going to be roughly about two heads across for this particular example and then i'm going to imagine the hips as being in this top half of the body so half a and half b and I'm going to keep right above this center line for the hips because I know our torsos tend to have a private areas that sweep just under and I don't want to go any lower than that. So I'm going to have a hip line around about here. With a female character, I'm going to make it just ever so slightly wider than the shoulder line, but only just. And where I've got the shoulder line at a slight angle like this, I'm countering that by having the hip line at a slight opposite angle like this. Contraposto. It just creates a bit more um, of an interesting situation in the poses of your character sometimes. And with this particular one, I'm going to remember that there's a center line of weight down the middle. So one foot's probably going to finish on this side of middle. And here's our center line again. One foot's probably going to finish on that side. Now, the next thing that I personally tend to do is either think about the curve of the spine really, really roughly, as in uh, it curves out to where you've got your shoulder blades, sweeps in a little bit as we get into the lower part of the back, and then sweeps out again as it goes down to the hips. So I can kind of imagine that the neck's down and then the back is going in before it's popping out. Just a really rough thing. And use that to ever so slightly guide what's going to be uh, the chest basic shape and the hips basic shape. So the chest is like a giant egg that represents a rib cage. It's this big elliptical curve. And very, very roughly, it's about one and a half head heights high. So that's kind of my rough measuring stick. I'm sweeping off of my character like so, creating this ellipse that kind of meets down and that very loosely is going to be our rib cage. I'm going to actually continue that sweep of our egg shape up here just so that I can use that to actually relax the line that goes a little bit down towards the shoulders here and here by drawing in uh, the lats but basically just curve that off a little bit there and then I've got a similar thing 
but certainly smaller and flatter, uh, which is going to be for the hips. Another great big circle or great big elliptical shape. This one's a bit more on its side, just like so. And then a super, super shallow curve underneath just to bring all of that together. Again, I'm keeping things uh, fairly rough as we're going here. So I'm just going to put that line a little bit heavier here just to say these are our rough guiding shapes. And then I like to imagine the front of the chest surface going down here, becoming part of the tummy. So it's kind of actually going in and down around the front as well. But what that's really saying for me is that I'm going to create a counter curve on this rib cage area here to actually kind of show the rough shapes of the ribs and how they're working. And then with this section down here, I'm going to show that it's a bit of a bucket or a bowl shape that's ever so slightly tilted towards us. So if this is our kind of flat top area, we're seeing into the top of the hips like that ever so slightly. Now, obviously you can just start joining these up in the middle by sweeping in and sweeping back out again, just with a bit of a gentle curve here. I'm trying to keep this really simple guys. So we are um, making a few things quite basic here. And then down on this side, I can kind of imagine that the tummy line is actually kind of coming down and sweeping in towards the middle. And by the way, where we have this hip point here, do imagine this great big sweeping curve right down to the middle of the privates at the bottom here. And then another one around about here doing a very similar thing. And that just creates this whole kind of joint area where you've got the thighs meeting into the hips, but also shows that natural effeminate curve where everything goes down to the privates in the middle down there like so. And then also just allows us to know, right, we've got some bump to the hip here. This is bone. So this is going to stick out and stay nice and solid, but we're going to get a little bit of the um, obliques just coming up the side to join that together there. And then up around this side where we've got the shoulders, we're going to draw a shoulder circle underneath our shoulder line, hanging straight off the bottom, round about so, not too big at all, about one third of a head height circle. And then another one here, sitting underneath there. And then we can imagine where the uh, lateral muscles on the back of our character are joining all of that together down there like so. Then on the front of this chest, I'm actually using that shoulder line to create kind of a curve over the surface of our rib cage area. And that tells me that the boobs are going to start somewhere underneath our shoulder line area. And they're probably going to stay inside of the zone about here. I'm not going to make this character super busty. This is just a reference sheet example for today. But I will imagine that in this particular zone here and in this particular zone here is where the boobs are going to actually come off of our character. So I'm just going to sweep out ever so slightly today and then back in one here. And do imagine this form very loosely as a water-filled balloon resting on the surface of your chest. It's almost like a teardrop bulging shape. But it's just being affected by gravity and creating these very nice gentle curves. Very similar thing on this side here. So I'm going to sweep down on this side and just get that other boob in. I'm going to really just show it by the outside edge. Just here. Like so. And back up in. And then we've got the rest of our actual character um, to get into place. So let's have a look at those legs really quickly and we'll come back to the arms for weight in a moment. Now I'm going to imagine that uh, where we have this kind of hip bowl shape right in here and right in here is where we've actually got the joints on this hip line for the legs in that center there. So I've got the middle of this zone and the middle of this one. Now this is a very shallow curve and this is a very steep one just because we've got the hips on that angle remember so i'm going to have this leg kind of putting in a good bit of force relatively straight down here something like that and this one i'm going to allow to come off at just a little bit of an angle something like that and this can have a tiny bit of angle because they're both the same length the hips are at a jaunt which means this is pushed a little bit further down or at least can sweep out and still meet the floor at the same height don't worry if that's a little bit confusing. Basically, we're just trying to keep our measurements even. And when it comes to this whole leg zone uh, in general, from where we've got our last one, two, three head heights, I'm going to keep the knees roughly in the middle here and here. And I'm going to indicate them by having a circle that's going to kind of come in and kind of come out. So our straight legs straight here, 
but I'm going to just sweep the knee ever so slightly to the inside because it's part of how the uh, femur bone inside actually just goes from the hip and ever so slightly in before going kind of down a bit more to be the shin and then with this circle here I'm going to just rest it on that line as well because we're going to see things from this leg a little bit more to the side. So what we can go ahead and do is actually join this in with some relatively uh, cylindrical shapes. I like to come from the knee just round the outside of the knee, not quite in that circle and we can sweep up, uh, imagine a straight line that's going up towards the privates here and another one that's going up out on this section here. But the reason I've kept this light is because we're going to just imagine something a little bit different to meet up this leg. And that is that the quadriceps, uh, all the muscles over the front here, they meet up near the hip flexors, which really means they're going to go from about here and here before they kind of sweep down and do stuff. And this line here, I'm actually going to imagine as a very gentle curve that sweeps up towards that point instead. So we're not going straight up the middle to the privates. I've got a little bit of a curve here. Then I've got a separate bulge that covers this part of the leg here. This is a separate bit of muscle doing separate things. So on the inside, I've got a little bit of a bump here before we follow that line down to the outside edge of the knee. In terms of the inside, sorry, inside edge, I'd say. In terms of the outside, it's much simpler. Uh, we're going to start up by where we've got the hip in here. And I'm just going to come out and create a nice bit of curve, curving a lot near the top of the um, thigh before we actually straighten out that curve and just sweep back in and down towards that knee, just like so. So you can see where it's relatively straight here, comes up and sweeps out at a curve, very nice. And then the rest of everything is kind of sweeping off here. So I like to imagine a little bit of triangle of shape underneath the kneecap, but just sort of tells us things are a bit in shadow there, things are pushed out a bit forward. That's just a bit of a reference point for me. And then I like to have the rest of the shin bone come straight down, and then we can enter into the foot area. So I'm gonna make myself a small ellipse to kind of represent where the ankle zone might be here. And under this part of the uh, shin, I'm gonna have a little bit of bulge, starting with our knee circle again, like it's hanging off. I'm gonna have very, very little kind of curve on the inside edge for the calf, just like so. But I'm gonna show that a little bit more heartily on the outside edge. So we've got the calf muscle up here. This is still right up to this top headline here curving a little bit more like we do near the bum on the hip side here before we sweep right in. And then I get to just straighten up this edge a little bit further, just like so, and just indicate what's going on the leg there, and just bring that there, and just clean up this edge a little bit too, like so. And then for the rest of the foot in our character, I'm gonna keep things very simple for hands and feet, that's not what this tutorial is really for, um, but I am going to just indicate this as a foot in a boot of some sort by putting in a relatively abstract shape like so, representing the front of the toes, the overall roof of the foot and the rest as it meets up into the ankle with the heel somewhere at the back. And on this leg, similar story, but I'm going to imagine that cylinder that's coming vaguely here and going up to about there. I'm going to allow that to sweep out as a curve as it comes up towards the privates on the inside there. And you'll notice that I've got a good bit of gap here where the privates are, the legs don't physically touch each other. So if I imagine that sweep there, you might have the underside of the tummy just a little bit there. So that'd be sort of a fupa area. And then over the top, we've got this solid hip area here, but we've got everything joining in right over the top here. And I'm gonna let that sweep right down and curve down towards the knee to show that there's a bit of bunched muscle on the top like so before we've got that knee joint over here, just bumping over that circle. And that takes us onto a slightly straighter town where we've got the shin bone at the front here, and again, the calves at the back. So I'm imagining that this curve is where we hang right around that circle, the calf off of, before it sweeps its way back in and down. Again, tiny bit of outside bump of calf that we might catch on this side of the shin before we sweep down towards the foot here. And with this particular example, another boot situation, this one where I'm going to allow maybe the heel to be ever so slightly risen. Top of the foot is probably up here. And then toes and everything coming down there after it all arches. 
and ankle joints and so again being a little bit abstract with the feet as long as we get the rough idea so here we've got a character that's kind of in this slightly jaunted pose i'm going to push this curve of the thigh a little bit more like this just to help with the idea of the pressure going down that far leg so i'm just going to take off the very top of that there and sweep this line right in like so but otherwise relatively happy with the basics of that standing pose we've got the joint in the hips she's thrusting out the bum she's showing off it's absolutely fine it's 2018 so in terms of back up here with the arms now i like to imagine the x marks a spot where we've got the rough front center line of our rib cage and where it meets the cross line for our shoulders this is actually where we've got a little bit of circle of negative space and that is for our collarbones one here to go out towards the shoulder and one out like so and when you ask for more measurements of things obviously we know that the legs are kind of split into the bottom half a little bit more than just half and they're split very roughly in half as well before we break down these different shapes so again quadricep muscles somewhere down here but i'm going to map this surface as well guys don't you worry and with the arms if this arm hangs naturally from the shoulder then the top part of the arm would hang and stop at the elbow at roughly the same point where you've got the rib cage just peeking down at the bottom edge so not the whole of this egg shape but the bottom part of the ribs themselves and if we allowed it to continue hanging this arm would probably stop at the wrist right at the level of the privates and then the hand would hang further down so what i'm going to do is have both hands up but use that measurement as a bit of an understanding so the arm will never be longer than this on our character it might be shorter because it's foreshortened but once you know these measurements you know never to go much further otherwise you're going to get some really weird things going on i'm going to put this arm coming out a bit so that it still measures as approximately the same distance and i'm going to have this arm then maybe just come up over here so that it still measures roughly the same as this part just like so i'm going to stop near the shoulder and then maybe the hand i'm just going to do a bit of a paddle flat shape for the hand at the moment just so we don't focus too much on it but also because this is not a hand tutorial as well we've got separate time dedicated to that so something just like so to represent the hand and then really similar um i'm going to just on this side maybe have this arm come even higher like so Again, just thinking about it would hang to about here, so that means it's going to reach to about there if it's side on. A bit shorter if it foreshortened towards us, but let's not worry about that. And then this hand can come back up here like so. And who knows what's going on there? It's a really weird pose. Maybe she's at gunpoint or maybe she's just waving happily to a crowd of people. I really can't tell. Now, with the overall size of these hands, from the wrist to the tip of the finger, you want that to be approximately, in terms of head height, from the bottom of the chin to about halfway up between the brow and the top of the head. So the majority of the head is going to fit a hand. Basically, put your hand next to your face and look in the mirror and you'll see for yourself. So I've got this kind of paddle for the palm bit, paddle for the fingers, and then a rough shape up here to indicate what might possibly be a thumb but we're not going to be too sure and keep it very plain and then i like to get some relatively small joint circles in and you'll notice that i have the point of our arm motion be at the edge of the circle so that the majority of the circles on the inside uh, v of where we've got things and that means that the elbow is going to pop quite nicely at the bottom and we can use some very simple cylinders or straight lines to just join up the edge of our shoulders to the edge of our arms just here and just here like so and then you can do a similar thing to get the forearms up to the wrist area but do bear in mind that things are much thinner by the wrist and a little bit more bulged by the joint so i'm actually going to imagine a bit of an elliptical shape again kind of doing this about halfway up the arm an elliptical shape doing this and then i'm going to actually just straighten it out this arm i can see already i've actually made a little bit too long in comparison to this one so if i imagine that distance to about there really i'm going to be starting the hand down here so i will move that in just a moment and that's going to keep things around about there instead so let's just lower this down and this is what's very useful about all of those head heights and all the measuring that we're doing just so you can get all of these little moments into place now when you're at your rough drafting stage that's the time to do it guys let's get the hand back in 
and then a bit of a paddle of the thumb and then a thinner straighter part of these arms reaches in so I'm going to go kind of thinner straighter bulge out a bit thinner straighter bulge out a bit strong point for the elbow and thinner straighter here start to bulge out where the forearm's got all of those muscles and tendons pulling everything and a similar story there on that side so now we've got ourselves a character that's standing up relatively measured it is worth making sure that you've got kind of the front areas of the chest making sure that everything's joined over the front as well as the back and that the shoulders themselves aren't just circles they are a bit of a muscular hinge socket joint that kind of sweeps down like that and bumps up here before sweeping down like that getting a good shoulder line on your female characters is always a good thing so we haven't made it too curvy and too very very anatomy ana anatomically there we go perfect but we have used some very basic shapes to break down what's going on with this female character i'm actually going to go ahead and do the same on this side as well just draw another copy of this lady um but we're going to do everything from behind. So I'm going to crack on and make this part a little bit quicker, probably a little bit less talking and focusing, just so that obviously this particular tutorial does not last forever. If you're happy with doing your character from the front, then use these basic building blocks that we've got. But do skip to the end of this video, guys, um, if you're not going to do the back, because I do actually uh, intend on mapping this nice and clearly so you can understand this different breakdown in just a moment. However, for those of you that actually want to learn to draw real good from different angles, let's look at the back of our character in head heights, in proportion, with some basic building block shapes. So firstly, again, I'm going to have this head uh, around about here. This character is going to be looking off to the side, maybe just catching us in the corner of their eye. And I'm just going to get another head shape off here. I'm actually going to go relatively flat down the front of the face looking sideways off to us and because we're looking at the side of the head I know that I can get this circle mapped in like so and that this bottom part is going to be most of our jawline. This section here under the uh, cross shape is going to be probably our ear and that we've got the overall curve of the brow that goes in towards this character here. It dips in just underneath the brow line. It then sweeps out a little bit where we've got the nose line for most of our kind of female anime characters. And then we're just going to dip down a little bit for a lip, bottom lip, tiny bit of chin, and then sweep in for the chin a little bit there, and then back up the jawline. And again, that's just an indicator of very rough mapping. You can think about the heads and the face, but bear in mind again, I've done that on a separate tutorial, guys. So let's think about that weight. We've got the neck coming off here. I've got to very quickly indicate that the spine's probably sweeping off that way and then bumping out that way where the uh, chest is back at an angle, but the hips kind of tilt forward at an angle and the tummy wraps it all together. And I'm gonna have maybe our line of the shoulders up here, just like so. And then uh, probably relatively similar on this one over here. I'll keep the leg on our right straight and sweep back the other one. But once I've got those shoulder lines in again at the heights that we've discussed, for reasons we've discussed them, I'm going to get another nice ellipse coming off here. I'm being much quicker on this example, so I'm just going to wrap that round like so. I'm happy with where I've probably got the traps just coming off the back there neckline in here going down and going out and then we've got the other big hip situation here just like so sweeping in a little bit under but we're going to do some different things when you're looking at the bum from the back guys and then i can just think about that spinal curve a little bit more clearly it's coming in here it's reaching down towards the lumbar area where it kind of straightens and then goes towards your coccyx as it sweeps back out like so then i know that maybe okay if we've got um, over the front, this kind of sweep that's going on with our character, then that means that I've got my sockets about here and here, and I'm going to just have this leg relatively straight again down here, kind of like so, just as a super faint guide. Maybe I'll make that a bit heavier for you guys. And then the other leg in a really similar vein, just coming out to the side. Excellent. So I'm going to start from the top this time and just start to work our way down. I'm going to go right up from these shoulders. I'm going to have this arm maybe resting on the hips, but from behind. So I'm going to get a bit more pop out of this shoulder circle. I'm making it a little bit higher. 
it's kind of intruding over that chin for this character a bit here and this one down here I'm going to make a little bit lower just kind of accentuating maybe I've got more angle than I initially thought on there and when it comes to the areas of the back guys remember that um, in the top part of your elliptical shaped circle we do have the shoulder blades doing their own thing so I'm going to imagine that there is a shape here that sweeps in this way and then reaches up like so towards the back of the deltoids in this kind of muscle group and a very similar thing going on this side there again I'm fitting that in opposite the other part of the spinal line thinking about how it maps to the curved surface of the back like so and then right up here where you've got the uh, trapezius and the other muscles of the upper back uh, all of that maps between the shoulder blades down to around about here and on the back then you've got the deltoid so all the muscles down your side that link up underneath your arm we're going to just sweep in here all this is kind of a v going down towards the middle of the back and very similar on this side i'm going to let that just sweep in here as well before we get down to the hips and all of this area so what we've got going on here is a bum and what i like to do is actually just use this very bottom line where we've got everything over the back of the hips to map out our bum rough circular shapes so i'm going to have one that goes from this center line out over to the right like this and you'll notice that i've kind of got not quite a perfect circle but an ellipse where the center longest middle is probably here and probably going to be here and i'm making these kind of longish eggish elliptical shapes like so now on this outside edge you need to think about the golden ratio in a bum but basically what i'm saying is a longer sweeping curve here and then it tucks really suddenly as we get to the bottom so longer sweeping over the top tucking a bit more into curve over the edge don't worry about that too much but i'm gonna let that flatten off and be where the bum joins the hip on one side and again on this side i'm gonna let this continue to make its way round in a very similar vein up down and around getting loads of construction lines happening around the bum very lucky and then up on the back area we've got a very similar thing where all of this is joining together with some different muscle groups mostly uh, the obliques are what you're seeing down the side so as all of this sweeps in here i'm going to just go up here and let that be a relatively kind of straightish line before it starts to just curve out to that bum i'll bring that up just a little bit here just so we don't get too extreme and over on this edge here as everything's coming out on the chest of this character like so i'm going to let that line drop fairly straight here before it certainly just bumps out over the hip there and then making our way down the leg well we know our knee kind of uh, action is going to be around about here not facing towards us though, so we're going to indicate this by the back of the knee i've got my uh, kind of cylindrical shape which is coming down here to the outside of the knee on this part of the leg so this are kind of where we've got the hamstrings coming in and then off this kind of hip thrust here i am still happy to allow a good bit of curve the outside part of the thigh before we sweep down to that knee curve and then in a very similar vein coming off the back of this from this kind of circle i'm imagining that i'm hanging a bit more meat like so and that's me really hanging the calves out of that joint before they sweep down towards where you've got your shin bones round about here which is of course sweeping then down to the back of the foot and the very back part of the foot you can imagine is kind of a flattened off dumpling kind of a circle that's taking most of the weight before the rest of the foot maybe we just see that foot just go off slightly to the side again like that and with this leg here slightly extended out again i'm gonna go so that i've got a little bit of that inside curve of the bum before i decide to start the rest of this line sweeping down here to that circle and then i am kind of imagining a bump towards the inside edge of this knee circle imagine that is the kind of uh, i want to say platella the kneecap um down there before i let this actual curve a bit like we did here actually sweep up not right to center though just giving yourself a tiny bit of gap to represent where the privates might be on your character just up like so and then back down here just like so by comparison i am going to ever so slightly take the edge off of this curve by because we've got our hips up here i've really not given this hip enough bump on that side and by the way guys 
as you're building up your characters like this, using these forms, keep looking for mistakes. Keep seeing, okay, how far out is this? How far in is that? Don't get too locked in. Don't be scared to make amendments like I do, because I don't draw perfectly. So let's go sweep outside this edge here. And then I'm actually going to let that sweep a lot more, like we did here, with it being thickest here before sweeping in on this outside edge. And I'm going to let that line straighten up a lot and come right down here like so. And that actually gives me much more of a nicer effeminate curve and line, just like this out to the front um, but we are still going to get a nice bit of carve come off of there and as much a degree probably come off of there and with this part of the leg i'm going to let that just sweep back up and in like it should like so and with this part back over here because we're a bit more side on again that kind of hanging carve is going to bump out a bit more on that side this leg's going to still be a little bit straighter on the inside edge I'll still give it a little bit of curve before it all sweeps down like so. And again, we're probably going to get away with the back of the foot landing about here on our character and the rest of the foot kind of going off away from our direction. So let's get this leg sweeping down and back there like so on the hamstrings. I'm going to draw in a triangle of shape over here to indicate the kind of divot behind the back of the kneecap area, a bit like that. What I'm trying to kind of say here is that you've got your separate hamstring muscles splitting off um, on either side there as they wrap around towards the side of the knee. Um, and that kind of opens up to allow all of the calf muscles to kind of join in from the underside like that. But again, I'll map all of that on at the end. And there we've got our relatively ankle joints somewhere over here, basic shapes for the body parts of our character. So with this one as well, I'm just going to get some limbs in. So if we're going to have the hand or the hip around about here, and if we see the back of the hand, then I'm probably going to just catch a bit of a flat group here and here. I'm imagining the wrist is here and this hand is sweeping off over the front of the hip. Then we need to make sure that we've got to uh, make enough space for this part of the arm and this part of the arm. So I'm going to imagine on this example that this is going to go out to about here and the forearm's gonna to measure to about here. Something like this should do the trick, maybe like that, of indicating a good bit of resting arm line. And I'm gonna test that water by getting in our circle for the elbow, and then just connecting the shoulder circle to the arm circle with some straight lines here. Very basic cylinder. I'm remembering that we've got this slight kind of bulge to the way the forearm works there before it thins out over where we get to the rest of things by the wrist and then sweep a bit of bulge there and there and I'm going to let the elbow of this one of course probably stick out right about here for this character as well and then just remember that the shoulder is actually doing a bit more work than just being circles probably sweeping down like that as well but I won't do too much more just to again simplify our basic building blocks and our basic shapes as we go. Now, I'm going to just let this uh, other arm of the character be, you know, somewhere away from us uh, out of view. Maybe I'm going to catch a little bit of a boob curb of this character, just sweeping out around about here, but nothing too much, nothing too crazy. Let's get a nice little inverse curve at the top if we can. It's a little bit better, just like so. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to have this arm just be away from us, away from the body. So maybe she's just waving just over her shoulder at us. Something like so with her derpy hands. So guys, those are the very basic building blocks. Now, uh, this has not been a masterpiece by any stretch of uh, the term, but what we are using are some very basic building blocks to put together an overall anime or manga character. Do remember, once you start to put some hair on your character and give the whole head zone a bit more volume, this is going to appear larger in ratio to the rest of the body, but this is not a bad way to start it at all. With this slightly extended leg, I might have the heel ever so slightly up. Little things like that when it comes to measuring things. But basically, around about seven and a half head heights or six and a half to seven and a half is a good amount of height for a fully grown female anime or manga character. And then we've got um, the chest area being about a head height and a half in depth. One head height tall for the bucket for hips. The overall body in general is going to be uh, one smaller half torso, one slightly larger half 
legs and feet. So try to work down from there and measuring the length of your arms shoulder to elbow is going to kind of hang to about the bottom of your rib cage you can feel it by yourself if you leave your arm by your side and touch your ribs where your elbow is and then hanging down further the forearm will go to the very bottom of the kind of private areas of the torso the wrist would be about there the rest of the hand would hang just below which is obviously when you leave your hands by your side they reach the pocket of your trousers fairly simple stuff so what i'm going to do guys is jump into some, look, I'm gonna jump into some time lapse, so there we go. And I'm going to actually map the different basic building block areas a little bit more clearly, map the surface curves of these basic shapes that we've put everything together with, and kind of just use that to pull the form a little bit tighter where we've got a few rough bits in different areas, just to make this an actual usable worksheet for you guys at home. So I'll see you guys in just a sec. So yeah guys, welcome back. So what I wanted to do is just really solidify the idea that an adult female anime or manga character or whatever type of um, anatomy or illustration you're working on, because this rule still applies, is going to be somewhere between six and a half to maybe seven and a half head heights tall. You can go eight, you can even go higher if you want to, but you're entering the realms of otherworldly creatures by them. And that head height is how we measure out loads of different things. It helps us understand um, how much of our character is going to be the body and torso, how much is going to be the legs where do we split things off at the knees how long do we understand to make the arms how long do we make the chest once you can measure that out you can have your characters in lots of different positions without everything looking kind of too weird or too derpy and a bit of a callback to last week's tutorial the one with the uh, webcam issues i've also just mapped out a few of the surface areas just to kind of express we are building these legs out of rough cylindrical shapes but there's a few different zones it's worth understanding where the hip flexors meet in at the front so that you can understand where the muscles pull off where we've got the kneecap, I've got some slightly sharper lines that I've used to indicate where the bone's sticking out for the joint. The calf muscles kind of sweep round to incorporate the knee, as do the quadriceps sweep round to roughly incorporate again when you're building up these shapes, what you're thinking about in your head. And when it comes to kind of the tummy area, uh, it's kind of a big ribbon of flesh, a big wide area that kind of maps to the edge of a rib cage at the front, right down across the front of the hips and kind of sweeps in this V down towards the privates. And also where you've got the shoulders, guys, uh, those circles actually kind of go into points down the outside edge of your arms. So that on this side, you've got your biceps on the outside, you've got your triceps and so on. And do remember that the forearms have a little bit of an elliptical game going on before they just sweep out into thinner, straighter parts up by the wrist. And when it comes to the back as well, guys, just to kind of recap, make sure you understand what's going on with the curve of the spine. That's your main uh, roadmap to the rest of the back, really. And then you've got the shoulder blades to pop in as it meets up into the back of the shoulders. You've got your overall uh, traps area up here. You've got your lat area, that big triangular V, the Dorito shape, so to speak, that kind of pulls everything back down here. And the bum, where that meets into the legs, do understand that you've got a good golden ratio curve. So it starts out relatively gentle, but hooks in more and more and spirals off um, as you kind of go down towards the bottom of the bum here and here. And understand whether or not you're getting a curve down or a curve that's slightly more inverted, because this straighter leg, the bum sitting on top, the legs taking all of that weight, Whereas of this one, uh, it's pulling that leg back a bit, it's a bit more contracted, so it, it kind of sits that curve a little bit differently. So guys, I really hope you found that to be useful when it comes to getting the proportions, the ratio right for your anime and manga characters. When it comes to taller and shorter characters, measuring out their head heights, I have done a completely separate tutorial on that. So if any luck, you've got a link on the screen right now if you want to expand on this topic. And remember, this worksheet, along with all the others from my tutorials, are available just for a dollar on my Patreon. Links, of course, below. However, the only way I'm able to make these free tutorials on YouTube are thanks to our patrons. So 
let me give a great big shout out to last month's patrons and they include Antoine M, Nyan, Mohammed T A, Divas Charms, Brandon W, Jared, Breton F, Bloopadoo, Plagish, Anthony C, H Caution, NASA A, Claytus, Redneck, Sheik's Apprentice, Admiral Okmar, A Whisper to a Raw, Avarice, Panda Boy, Mark W, Carlos R, Lane D, Chibonobi, Sambia M, Sergio H, Purity Rain, Michael C, Brandon S, Dante Norm, Mr. Mooney, Some Weeb, Nezreen B, Joe G, Daniel J, Elvin, Shisho, Michael S, Jason W, Delivery Wolf, Aaron B, Alex B, Zero, Demal Maximus, Cuddlebum, The Travelling Wolf, Ethereal, Joe R, Mad Duck, Garrett C, Rider 2KX, Michael S, Trent H, Jorgen A, Luke C, Johnny T, Connor M, Julio Felix O, Rob, Kamari J, Jamie, Cache Commando, Mizino, Grizzly, Mr. Turtle, Matthew G, Simon B, Gareth, Taylor S, Kenneth J, H, Homongchi L, Angry H, Johnny Y, Ollie, Garrett, Amoral Muffin, Christian L, Tokiko K, Timothy B, Minion715, Ken E, Wendell S, Zahaki, Fat Kurt D, Natasha G, and LMA Gamer. Oh my goodness. So guys, do remember that um, that list is going to be a lot, lot shorter next month. I'm not going to keep plummeting through all these names, but thank you so much to all of those patrons on Patreon for all of the support. Check it out if you're ever curious. And as for the rest of you, let me know what other kind of tutorials or topics you'd like to have covered in the future. Get in the comments and subscribe if you haven't already.